Hi, welcome to this video on Microbit and in this video we are going to look at how to create a simple variable and how to control that variable using basic inputs. Okay, so uh, when you uh, go onto the Microbit website and you click onto the Make Code section, uh, first and foremost we're going to need to create ourselves a new uh, piece of code, okay, a new project. So we need to click on this big purple button here and it's going to ask you to give it a name. So therefore, this one I'm just going to call counter and click create. Now, as per usual, what will happen is you'll be given the on start and the forever blocks to get you started. Now, today we're going to make it start with the on start section and we're going to uh, look at creating a variable which we can uh, set from the get-go so looking onto our categories here i'm going to just move down till i find variables and click on that and you'll see that in the variables tab there is actually nothing there yet except for make a variable because we have to make it in order to be able to get the requisite instructions so i'm going to click on make variable and i have to give it a name so i'm going to call this uh, number counter Okay, now it's vitally important that when you create things like variables, you give them meaningful names because when you then come to piece your code together, it reads much easier and it's far easier to interpret and understand what it is you're supposed to be doing. So I've called it number counter and you see I now have these three blocks I can use. Set number counter to zero, change number counter by one and just number counter on its own. So as you read them, they make sense and they make uh, much more uh, clear what it is you're trying to do so in the first instance I'm going to grab this one that says set number counter to zero and I'm going to put that in on start so when the program starts up it's going to set the number counter to zero now the thing is at the minute I haven't told it to show this or to do anything with it except for set the number counter to zero so I'm going to have to uh, put some code in there which is going to allow me to uh, visually represent that so if I go to basic and I just grab a show number and drop that underneath. Uh, you'll now see on the emulator that a zero is going to pop up. But there is an issue with that. In that if I now change that to a two. And then I let the code reload uh, itself. It's still showing a zero. And that's because it's showing the, le uh, the number zero. Which I've instructed it to do. Not showing the value of number counter. So to get around that what I need to do. Is I need to go back to variables. And I need to select this torpedo at the bottom here that says number counter. And just pop that there uh, in the hole where the zero was. So it now says set number counter to two and show number counter. And if you look at the emulator, it's now showing a two. So whatever number I put into there to show it as, it will load up in the emulator and show that number. So... Moving on then from here, nice and easy start. We're now going to increase or increment is the proper term, uh, our variable by one. And the way that I would do that is to start off with, I'm just going to put a pause in there of 100 milliseconds. And after that, if I go back to variables, you see I have this one here that says change number counter by one. Now, if I drop in that change number counter by one, then that means after the initial start of showing a zero, every 100 milliseconds, that value is going to count up by one. The issue at the minute is I'm not showing that. So what I need to do is I'm just gonna right click on this block here and duplicate it. I'm just gonna drop it in there underneath the change number counts by one. So if I maximize this, now you can see that every 100 milliseconds, my counter is counting up by one, which is fantastic. It's what I want it to do. So developing this further still, we're now going to add in a basic input. To add in an input, I simply click on the input tab and I'm going to take this first one here that says on button A pressed. So basically when button A gets pressed, it's then going to do something. So what I should do from here is I'm just going to grab these two blocks from forever I'm going to drop them into the on button a pressed so that if I now click on the a button you can see that I increment by one the next problem arises is that I have no way of counting back down 
And that's easily solved by adding some functionality to the B button. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this block here of on button A pressed, and I'm going to change it to button B pressed. Now the code is still the same, so I need to change it. So rather than change number by one, I'm going to change that number by minus one. So if I was to maximize this now, you can see that I can change by one or I can minus by one. So finally, to wrap it all up, what I also want to be able to do is to be able to reset the counter back to zero by pressing A and B at the same time. To do this, I click on the inputs. I'm going to go to on button A pressed. And I'm going to change that to A and B. And then from there, I'm just going to copy and paste the code that was in the on start. So set number counter to zero and show number, uh, duplicate that and put that in the A and B pressed. So if I now launch this in full screen, I can go up, I can go down, and I can press A and B together and it sets it to zero. Okay, so nice and easy then, we've created a variable, we've shown that variable, and then we press on the A button to change it by one. We can press on the B button to change it by minus one, or we can press A and B together in order to set it to zero.